Hello, I am Darren again. Today's topic comes from many different questions in and around narcissism, specifically around motivation. Why do narcissistic people behave the way they do? What is it drives them? What is their motivation? So in order to answer those questions, in this video, I'm going to outline typical behaviors, characteristics, and beliefs to try to illustrate recurring themes and common threads. And then I'm going to talk about the why, why they think and act the way they do. But just to remind you, this video is for information purposes only. So first of all, I would like to say that narcissist is a term that's often used out of context. It's it's a name we give to someone that we're having an argument with. It's it's a name we give to someone we consider to be quite vain. You know, the, the boss doesn't give us next Tuesday off and we call them a narcissist. Now, maybe they are, but not necessarily, not always. If we're honest, all of us behave selfishly from time to time. We get embarrassed, we get outraged, sometimes we lash out. Other times we might actually prioritize ourselves a bit. We prioritize our work, our career, our self-care. But if you think about it, there is a healthy balance between looking inwards and looking outwards. There is a healthy balance between paying attention to our own needs and paying attention to other people's needs as well. Now, narcissism, in terms of a personality disorder anyway, is different. It isn't the same as self-interest, self-care, or even self-love, certainly not in a healthy way anyway. The key word is disorder. Now, I often think of a disorder as looking at the impact it has on a person's day-to-day -day functioning, the impact it has on their relationship with themselves, as well as with other people. And what I mean by that is looking at a belief system that isn't open to change, uh, behaviors that are constant, they're pervasive, they're persistent. If you will, it's like a default setting. And with narcissistic personality disorder, what we often see is a self-inflated, idealized image of themselves. Now that image helps them to avoid feelings of shame and insecurity. But the work, the effort that goes into creating and maintaining that image can be, can be very dysfunctional and very destructive, not just to the people around them, but to themselves as well. So looking at some of the common behaviors and characteristics, number one, they believe they are special, they believe they are unique, they believe they are entitled. And because of this, they expect special treatment. Now, anyone who doesn't comply is either of no value or they are the enemy. They believe they deserve the best. It is theirs by right. Now, that being said, some narcissistic people do work very hard and do enjoy the fruits of their labor. But other times, other narcissistic people, they believe it is theirs by right without having to earn it, without having to work for it. And they can be very resentful when they don't get it or don't have it. And that sense of entitlement can lead them to be very exploitative of others. Now, there's a lack of empathy there, which means they wouldn't really think twice about taking advantage of other people to get what they want, especially those with a very kind and gentle nature. And anyone who challenges this sense of entitlement or defies them in any way is often met with aggression or passive aggression or cold shoulder rejection. Next, they believe they are innocent, they are virtuous, and they are always right which generally means everyone else is either wrong or is in the wrong. They will always be the hero or the victim, never the villain. They will always know more than anyone else. Now, you think about it, maybe you're a brain surgeon, you have 30 years experience doing brain surgery. Well, they will know more about brain surgery than you do. Either that or they will know a very powerful, very influential person who knows more than you. Another common characteristic of narcissism is being highly sensitive or highly resistant to criticism. So anything that threatens their version of themselves, they tend to react very defensively. And that could include becoming very aggressive, which is normally referred to as narcissistic rage. In other words, they explode or they will implode. They become very sad, very depressed, just want the world to end. And those defensive reactions tend to have the people around them acting very cautiously, even reluctant 
to challenge their version of reality, their version of themselves. They, they fear the reaction. They fear the punishment. So the narcissistic person using maladaptive and unregulated behavior condition the people around them not to challenge them. They want to be surrounded by or associate with people and things that give them status. They, they exaggerate and lie about their accomplishments, about their contributions to projects. They want to be showered with praise and admiration. If they don't get it or if it's not to the standard that they want or if it begins to diminish somehow, they tend to punish, devalue the people around them or they just go and look for a new source. Another common characteristic of narcissism would be double standards. A relationship with a narcissistic person tends to be very one-sided. They demand a lot of respect, but insist that others have to earn theirs, which they never will. They can be very jealous and controlling of their partners in relationships, but might not necessarily have a problem cheating themselves. They can be resentful and envious of other people and their achievements, but demand admiration for theirs. They hold other people to account for their words and their actions, but take no responsibility for their own. Now, the expression I often use is, they wet the bed and they blame the blanket. But the thing is, narcissistic people often accuse other people, particularly their victims, of doing the very things they do themselves. And lastly, they demean and devalue others. Now, they treat others, even those closest to them, with contempt. They believe that people should envy them, so they kind of get a bit annoyed if they're not envied, but they feel threatened if they are envious of someone else. And that envy could just be around someone who's happy, confident, or popular. They become insulting, patronizing, and scornful. So there are some of the common characteristics and beliefs of, around narcissism. But back to the question as to why. Why are they like that? Why do they behave like that? Why are they so disagreeable? Why, why do they say no to something that could well be in their own best interest? Why can they lie to your face and two minutes later deny saying that very thing? Why can they pull up something from a decade ago that you said as evidence against you being wicked or wrong today? Why do they live in a world that tends to involve a lot of self-deception, distorted, sometimes even magical thinking? Why do they live in a fantasy world that's all about image, uh, self-glory? They are powerful, influential, drop-dead gorgeous, virtues, brave, whatever it happens to be. Well, it's because narcissism is primarily ego-driven. Now, all of us are driven by our ego from time to time, but remember the key word disorder. Narcissism is primarily ego-driven. Now, that's not to say they can't be emotionally driven or rationally driven or even purpose-driven like everyone else at times, but it is primarily ego-driven. It's all about me, my status, my power, my gratification. It's about how I look, how I feel. There is an emptiness inside which can never really be filled. There's a constant need for validation and admiration and praise from other people. They have a damaged, fractured sense of themselves, so need constant external validation. People often use the term narcissistic supply. Other people supply them with attention. It fills their ego. It feeds their ego. It tries to fill that inner emptiness. If they can't get positive affirmation, by the way, they'll try and get negative. If they can't get positive attention, they will settle for negative. They often create drama because they feed off the energy. They have unrealistic standards that other people can never meet. But the more those people try to meet, the more important and powerful they feel. The grandiose behavior or the sense of helplessness. Now, these are just facades that they hide behind, as is their virtue signaling, their moral outrage perceived injustices, their superficial charm, the pseudo-intellectualism, even when they're being kind and altruistic, these are all facades. It's all about how do I look when I'm doing this and what is it gets me what I want. It's all image, but no depth. 
It's all about how others see them from the outside. They are a wonderful, loving parent, a great family person. They are the best friend. They are the best employee. They are an amazing, loving, caring partner. It is only those closest to them that get to see the real them. When they're lying to other people about their victims, it's all about maintaining that false sense of self, that image. If they can't control how the victim is seeing them, they're going to try to control how other people see the victim. And their ego is so weak that they can pick up on anything that they might consider to be a slight against them. Any threat to their status, that view of themselves, is often taken as a personal attack and they overreact which is why they can be very vindictive. They have been emotionally wounded somehow. Now, the thing about narcissism as well, it has a very long memory and they hold on that they hold on to that rather for a long time it also tends to be very destructive so when narcissistic people can no longer destroy something from the inside they will try and destroy it from the outside for example when it comes to the end of a relationship with a narcissistic person that's often when the abuse ramps up the gear their ego has been wounded the ex-partner has to be punished for leaving them and certainly not in every single case, but in many cases, those who do get back together after a breakup often report the abuse gets worse. It becomes more insidious. Now, that narcissistic person may have been grateful for being taken back and, and being given a second chance, but only for a short time. It's not long be before they're back to being resentful because they had to face the consequences for their behavior. It's not long before they're back to projecting that hurt back onto the partner. But the difficulty is with narcissistic personality disorder, people like that can be very resistant to changing their behavior, even, even when they do recognize it is causing them problems. That being said, it's not to say that people with narcissistic behavior can't be helped because some would be what's known as quite high functioning. They learn to regulate their behavior with the right kind of help and the right kind of support, even if that takes time and a lot of hard work. But the difficulty is it's not accepting responsibility. With a lot of narcissistic people, remember the fault always lies outside of themselves. So if the fault lies outside of them, so does the solution. It's everybody else's fault. I'm the one who's suffering here. Everybody else has to change to make it easier for me. So they will have to try harder. One of the things I often say is to discern the difference between the change in a tactic and the change in a person. Now, I hope this video has helped shed some light on the motivations of people with narcissistic personality. Now, as always, there's so much to cover. There's many things I haven't mentioned, such as gaslighting, trauma bonding, and manipulation, and so on. Please feel free to use the comment box below if there's anything you wanna add. There are some interesting conversations start around these videos. But if you find this video helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health-related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.